for us and much more now we can be justified by his blood we shall be saved and not be lost not the wrath of God come down upon us but we shall be saved from the wrath of God through Jesus Christ our Lord for if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled Reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And we were even, Paul said he was an enemy of Christ at one time. And Christ died for him. But he says, much more now being reconciled to Christ, we shall be saved by his life. And when we are reconciled to Christ, and that is all of us, whoever you might be, we've got to be reconciled to Christ. And that becomes just by taking your condition to Him. Ask, and you shall receive. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. And can we all here today, each and every one of us, can we say that, that we are resting in the joy of our Lord Jesus Christ because we have received the atonement. We've received the blood of the Lamb. And that blood of the Lamb has washed us clean. Can each and every one say that that's here today? Ask yourself the question, have you been able to receive the atonement, that spirit? And if you haven't, just take it to the Lord. Go to Him. He, will, he is quick to give to all of those that come to Him. And He says that you, as being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall my heavenly Father give unto His children, to those that come to Him and ask Him of the good gifts, the things that we need spiritually. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Wherefore, as by one man, and that was Adam and Eve, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, that is that eternal death, and so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. And I want us all to understand that. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin was not imputed where there was no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned over the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that is to come. We all receive that in Adam's transgression. Didn't matter who we are, we received that sinful nature. But not as of the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. He says, now if one, if we all receive that offense by one, he says, much more we are being able to, we are able to receive, if we want it, the grace of God and the gift by grace. And what is that gift? That gift is the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And what will that gift give to us? Eternal life, which is by one man. And that all came, and that is, that is being made offered to all of us today through Christ by His life here upon the earth, what He did for us. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift 
is of many offenses unto justification. That free gift, he says there, will cover all sins. It does not matter what it is. If we take it to the Lord and ask Him to forgive us, He says that doesn't matter. He says, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. He just keeps wanting to encourage us, and, and He is encouraging us to take it to Him and to be able to receive and to, first of all, we got to know that we need that free gift. We've got to know that we are in a lost condition. And we need that free gift. And he says here, which receive abundance of grace. And that is all those that ask. An abundance of it. And of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. And that is the thing. We've got to be filled with righteousness. Not religion. We've got to be filled with righteousness. There are people all over the world that feel like they are living a religious life and they feel like they are full of religion but have no righteousness in them at all. Hell will be full of religious people but there will be no righteous people in hell. The righteous, those that I'm saying, cause talking about there is the same that he was talking about when he said, many would seek to enter in, and there are many. And he said that they would come up and they would say, Lord, Lord, we did this and we did this in, in the, your name. And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me. Why? They were doing it on their own terms. And that is what religion in a lot of cases is doing today with people. And I'm not saying that all people who proclaim to be religious are bad. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm just saying that there is many people who are in that feel-good religious part. That they feel like that I can say that I believe upon Jesus Christ. But then go about and do whatever I want to do. And be involved in the things that the Lord has condemned. And my gods are the things of this world. But I can still be saved. And that's not at all what Christ is saying. And that's not what Paul was saying. He says that we have to get out of the offensive works that is offensive to the Lord. And that Spirit of the Holy Ghost will lead us away from that type thing. And then we can be able to receive that gift of righteousness and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and shall reign in life. Life, not death, but reign in life. Therefore, as by one offense of, the, of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. The free gift. I want you to keep listening to that. It is a free gift. Free gift that He is offering to us. And remember, you can be connected to God the Father. You know someone that is connected to Him. You can know someone, Jesus Christ, that is close to Him. That if you'll take your condition to Him, He will take it to the God for you and mediate for you and clean you up. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now you hear what he's talking about there. He says be made righteous. And that's what we've got to have. We've got to be filled with righteousness. And by the obedience of one, the obedience of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, how He was obedient to God the Father in all things, he says, many shall be made righteous by believing upon Him. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. 
But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And that grace of God can abound in your life greatly, much more than anything. Much more it can abound in your life and remove and take out that bad spirit, that spirit of Satan. It can remove us, move it right out of you. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. And let's read that again and listen carefully. That as sin hath reigned unto death, and it has in a lot of people all the way along, Sin has reigned in them, even all the way into death and then into eternal death. But he says there, he says, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life. By who? By Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the one that came here to the earth. He's the one that was obedient to his father. He's the one that went back to the right hand of his father there and is there now. He is the one that each and every one of us has access to today. And isn't it wonderful that we can go and we can tell our friends that we have access to someone that's in authority. We have access to someone that knows all things. Someone that had created this world, created you, knows all about everything here upon the earth. We have access to that man. We have access to the power of God to overcome Satan. We have access to use that now that we might reign here upon the earth and then reign in eternity through righteousness, through that spirit of righteousness unto what? Eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Not by me, not by you, not by your friend or your connected friend, but by Jesus Christ our Lord. In one place he says, he says, Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? And I want us to all here today ask ourselves that question. Am I here following Him? Am I reigning with Him to eternal life in righteousness? Or is it in my life that I am there saying, Lord, Lord, but I am not doing the things that he asked me to do. And if that's the case, I am at distance from him. And I will not be able to stand with him at that last and that final day. But I'll be a cast into outer darkness. We have such a wonderful opportunity today to be able to receive that free gift. And remember that. It is a gift that He's given to you and that He's offering to us all so that we can stand with Him through eternity. And be able to know and understand what His will is. I want to turn over here and read just a few verses here in the 6th chapter of the Ephesians. Starting at the 13th verse of the 6th chapter of the Ephesians, 
He says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the day, in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Now I want us to listen. That sums up basically what the Lord has been talking to us about today. He says, take upon you the whole armor of God, the whole power of God that He is offering to us. He says, take that upon you. And how do we take it upon us? Going to Him and receiving that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And He says there, so that you'll be able to stand against Satan. And Satan had no power, just as Jesus Christ was able to stand there. And Satan had no power against him in the, while he, when he came out of the, the, the uh, wilderness. We can be the same. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. <laughs> And having on the breastplate of righteousness, again, what is that? He didn't say religion. He said, have the breastplate of righteousness, that armor that covered the body here, the, the, the vital organs. And he says that the being girt with the truth, having that breastplate of righteousness, and that's the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, that can protect that vital part of us, the soul, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, and above all these things, taking the shield of faith that we've talked about and he's, he's brought to our attention so vivid today, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now he told us to, here, I'll give you all this protection to protect you. Now, I'll give you a weapon to be able to take out, to destroy Satan. And he says, the, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, to comfort you, to build you up. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel of God and of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we do these things, if we listen to these things that has been brought to us today, and we do them, we take them to the Lord. The promises that He has made to all of us will come upon you. And that peace and that hope will all be there so that you can have it. And then you can be able to stand at that final day and hear those words to enter in to my kingdom. Thou blessed those that has done my will. He says, all those that love me keep my commandments. And all those that love him and love him right are those that are full of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. So it all ties together, friends. Take your condition to Him today. Ask, and you shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened. Seek, and ye shall find. The Lord is a merciful being, and He is willing to work with all of those that come unto Him. As we sing today number 311, there may be someone that would like to unite with the spiritual church of Christ. And you can do that by coming forward.
I hope that we can all say today, as we just saw him, I hear thy welcome voice that calls me, Lord, to thee for cleansing in thy precious blood that flowed on Calvary. And I want us to all be able to say the next, I am coming, Lord, coming now to thee. That is what we need to each and every one be saying today, coming to you so that we can have eternal life, eternal salvation. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, thank you for all that you have given to us today, the encouragement. Thank you for showing us what we need to do individually so that we can have eternal life through you, Jesus Christ. Be with all those that are struggling spiritually to help them to just look to you, knowing that you have the answer. That is that free gift to be given to all those that ask. And we know that you are not slack concerning your promises, but that you are well able to perform all that you have said. So again, thank you for what you have done for us. Be with us in the upcoming days that we serve you in the right and the proper way. And show us what you'd have for us to do with the things that you have entrusted into our hands. And we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.